in the first days, people laughed. I had um, journalists writing about me right on the front page of the local paper. Local whistler puckers out. I was just destroyed. I quit whistling after a year and a half. I wanted to do something, something that was more fulfilling than just business. Life can't be just all about business. Well, I love music, but I can't play anything. I'd go in the other room, put a, put a stereo record on or whatever, a CD on, and, and start whistling along. And then I thought, you know, why don't I whistle? Because I had heard somebody on CBC years and years ago whistling with a symphony orchestra, and I knew it could be done beautifully. It really took a discipline. I will do this for 10 years, and then we'll see what we do with it from then on. I had to go out in my car every night. I couldn't do it in an apartment or at home because uh, if I whistled too loud, I'd be evicted. And yet you have to whistle really loud. Like one coach told me, he said, Mike, hit every note louder than you've ever hit it before. I think there's good potential to make it a full-time living, uh, make a full-time living at whistling, uh, but it depends on the degree of your living expenses. <laughs> I don't think you're going to drive a Rolls Royce and do it, but if you kept your expenses very low, you could enjoy it. You've got to have certain your own personal reasons for recording. One of them is not to make a lot of money because you go broke real fast trying to sell CDs in any specialty instrument all by yourself. I'm looking forward to the possibility of doing a few things. I'm going to combine it with public speaking. If anyone will actually listen to this whistling, I'm happy to be here and bring a little music to you. To inspire people to find their own passion, find their own thing, and I call it wetting your whistle. The thing that gives me more pride than anything else is when you nail it, you just go, wow, that's what it feels like to do it right. <laughs>